Let's Talk About Kidneys takes a deep dive into the chronic kidney disease patient journey. We're here to inspire meaningful conversations and to help people living with CKD gain a full understanding of their disease. If your test results indicate any abnormalities or a decrease in kidney function, your doctor may refer you to a nephrologist. Learn more about these symptoms. Hello, Dr. Whitaker. How are you today? Doing great. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much for taking the time, coming here, being our guest on our podcast today. You're welcome. Glad to be here. And I think that this topic that we're going to discuss with you is... I think one of the most important topics on the podcast, because especially for a patient, because it's introducing them to the world of nephrology and we're getting down to the basics. So I have a couple questions. Are you ready to answer them and get going? All right. Let's jump in. So the topic is when should you see a nephrologist? So my first question is, why am I even being referred to a nephrologist? A great question. Uh, I have a lot of patients ask me that question when I walk in. Uh, There's a lot of confusion. Uh, Even the word nephrologist is a little complicated. It's Greek. Nephron means kidneys. So uh, the patients know, you typically know it's about the kidneys, but you don't really know exactly what's wrong with my kidneys. Do I have a disease or is it just something else? So very often your primary care physician runs routine blood tests or urine tests and finds an abnormal number and that indicates there's something that's affecting the kidneys uh, and that's the reason you're seeing me. But not always. I can always also see you because there's something that's associated or in relation with the kidneys. For example, blood pressure. We know that kidneys are very important for re- regulating your blood pressure. So if your blood pressure is hard to control or fluctuates or drops too much or goes up too high, then uh, we typically get involved and the primary care physician wants, wants you to see, see us. Sometimes it's a kidney stone. You know, it's not really the kidney, but it's a stone that's in the kidney. And so we're seeing you, and our, really our goal is to prevent more stones, to, to make sure you don't get more stones in the future. And sometimes it's even uh, an abnormal number, such as what we call an electrolyte which is uh, like a sodium level or a potassium level or a calcium level. So it's very often it is about the kidney function, but quite often it is in relation to the kidneys, but not really your kidney function. And you may not have kidney disease. You know, it may just be in relation to the kidneys. Okay. So if a patient comes to see you, does that automatically mean, I know you just touched on that, but does it automatically mean they have chronic kidney disease? No, and, and in fact, uh, one reason we're seeing you uh, is to help find out, is it really a, quote, disease, or is it just an abnormal number that looks like it's abnormal, but our tests show that this is actually a benign condition. It's not a disease uh, and something you don't need to worry about. So it's not necessarily you know, a disease, which always sounds a little bit dreadful. But I think our main purpose is really to find out is it something that we call a disease? And if so, is it something that is more serious or something that we can just manage periodically with uh, some less close observation? Okay. And what is the difference between a urologist and a nephrologist? Okay, there's a lot of confusion about that. <laughs> so we both deal with the urogenital tract, but the urologists are typically, first of all, they're surgeons and we're internal medicine subspecialists. So the urologist very often deals with uh, kidney tumors uh, or kidney stones that are stuck in the kidneys to remove the kidney stone. But also typically they deal with male issues such as prostate or even sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction. So they focus more on the male, like a gynecologist for women. The okay. urologist is more for the man, man for the sexual part or uh, bladder part. The urologists also deal with bladder issues that affect both men and women. So they may see women uh, to help with bladder leakage. We're, tipi- we're really focused more on the kidney function. And um, as I mentioned, we're not surgeons. We're really internal medicine subspecialists. Once I get the referral to a mm-hmm. nephrologist um, and my PCP sees something abnormal in my test, how soon should I be seeing you and yeah. getting in for that first appointment? We'd like to see you within about two weeks. That's really our goal. It doesn't always perfectly work out that way, 
but that's really our goal. Uh, always, if there's something more serious, we see you fast, next day, next two days. But we don't want you to wait too long because there's a lot of questions and sometimes some anxiety. You know, what's right. going on? I want to know what's, fine, what, what's going on. So uh, we try to see you quite soon, and our goal is really within two weeks. Okay. And just a side note, I think that if, you know, patients are listening and they haven't seen a specialist before and you want to see them in those two weeks, I think making sure that they check their insurance so that there's not a lagging in that. Would you agree with that? Yes. So very often the holdup is uh, logistics or what we call uh, uh, insurance issues. We have to verify the insurance. We sometimes don't get, get the callback or the verification. And so it's sometimes just paperwork that holds it up. But assuming that's pretty smooth and straightforward, and then we'd like to see you fairly quickly. Okay. And then what sort of abnormal blood or urine tests that are kind of the indicators that a nephrologist needs to be seeing? So the, the typical blood test is a test called creatinine, which is a, a funny name, but it, basically it's a waste product that's coming mainly from muscles. And when your kidney is not able to eliminate the waste, it builds up in the blood. So when the blood level goes up, the creatinine goes up in your blood, that shows that we have less kidney function to eliminate that uh, waste product, the creatinine. Another test is BUN or BUN. That's similar to creatinine. It's a waste product. B-U-N? B-U-N, B-U-N okay. or BUN. That builds up also in the blood. Um, and there's some other fancier tests that we typically don't use. Now, in the urine, which is very important, uh, you may have completely normal blood tests, but something shows up in the urine. And you, you'll hear your nephrologist talk about, I find protein in the urine, which is because the kidneys are like, they're, it's a filter, multiple filters. And they try to keep all the good stuff in your body, such as protein. So when the protein shows up in your urine, it shows there's a leakage of protein and there's maybe some damage to the filters in your kidneys. Uh, or it could be blood. Uh, you may see the blood. You may notice one day that you have blood in the urine, but very often you don't see the blood at all. It's what we call microscopic. So it's just when we look at it under a microscope and we find some red blood cells uh, and the PCP and the test they find is on the test, but you may not see that. Okay. So the urine tests are often protein that shows the leakage or blood. And in the, in the blood test, it's typically the creatinine or a BUN bone. Okay, that was a good summary of that. And um, if I come to you and I'm seeing a nephrologist, does that affect my overall health? Can you explain the difference in that? Yeah, so the kidneys are really an essential part of your whole body because they eliminate all the waste products, but they also control a lot of hormones. For example, people are surprised to learn that uh, my blood pressure is controlled by the kidneys. My blood level, red blood cells or anemia, is controlled by the kidneys. You wonder why would that be? That's how it is. And also bone disease. So your bone health uh, is also affected by the kidneys. They regulate how much calcium and phosphorus and some other uh, electrolytes are being um, eliminated or kept in the body. So, and the other th bigger in the bigger picture, the heart and the kidney, they're like in a crosstalk. They talk to each other. Uh, a sick heart affects the kidneys. You may have an abnormal kidney function because your heart is sick. And, and the opposite is true also. You may have a bad heart number because your kidney is sick. So the two really talk to each other and kind of work together. So uh, the heart specialist, the cardiologist, and the nephrologist, we, the kidney together. specialist, we have very often we have the same patient. We work together. We have the okay. same issues. And interestingly enough, some very often we have the same medications or similar medications because they affect the help both the kidneys and the heart. So yes, uh, having a good kidney function and having that work properly affects your entire body, not just the heart, but that's one that I would I think is very important. Okay. And then once I see you for that first appointment, how often would a patient come in to see a nephrologist? It really depends what we find and uh, what our tests show. I would say after an initial visit, I typically see you back fairly quickly because I want to discuss the results, the lab tests, and 
by the way, I always say everything I do goes to your primary care physician. So he or she gets everything we do. So there's that constant communication. There's always communication. And it's much better these days with electronic health records. Everything we do, they can see and vice versa. So there's great communication. But I want to see you back fairly soon because I want to discuss the results so you don't wonder what's going on and what did they find. Um, Can you define fairly soon just so that if a patient is listening, they can kind of understand if they have to rearrange their schedule or something? Yeah, so typically soon means two to four weeks. Okay. Now, if it's something that is really, it's been there for a long time, it's not really worrisome, that just needs to be checked periodically, I may see you back in a year. Now, if you see you back in a year, I will give you a phone call and explain to you, by the way, your tests are it's pretty benign, you don't have to worry. Well, I go back to your PCP, I see you once a year just to kind of stay in the loop and make sure everything is okay. Okay, and so you just mentioned seeing the PCP, so... Does a nephrologist replace a PCP? Do you guys work together? We work together. Okay. So never, the answer would be never. And I think it's very important for uh, the patient to understand we really work together with the primary care physician, but we don't replace each other. There's many things that we don't do that the primary care physician must do uh, and establish cancer screening. But, of course, female health, male health, uh, um, osteoporosis, um, there's there's many other tests that the uh, primary care physician will will test and and will work uh, with you, but um, we don't replace. We work together. We okay. don't replace a PCP. All right. So, when should I see my PCP versus the nephrologist? You just kind of broke that down. But if you can give me two main um, general health issues that the PCP would cover, cancer screening, mm-hmm. always. And typically diabetes, diabetes, blood sugar management. Uh, we probably do more blood pressure management because it's kind of in our area because the kidneys affect the blood pressure. But just two examples would be cancer screening. Uh, vaccinations is also very important. You have to be up to date on your vaccinations. And uh, he or she, the primary care physician, knows exactly when you do for your next shot. We don't, we don't do that. We really focus more on your kidneys and, you know. Okay. Um, And so we are at the end of our general questions, but just to kind of wrap up for those that are listening, can you give me two to three main points that we discussed in this podcast that you think patients should really uh, be attentive to? Okay, well, I think the first point would be make sure you see us. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) If you get the referral, go through the process, make sure you see them. And I know there's a reluctance. Why would I... Why do I need to see another doctor, you know? And I understand that's completely normal. But there's always a reason why the primary care physician feels that something needs to be seen by a specialist. So make sure you uh, see us for an evaluation to see what's going on. The second point is if we make a medication change or give you a new medication, make sure you understand what is the medication for, why am I taking it, how often do I need to take it, and also... You may find out the medication is not covered by your insurance. That happens very often. And it's very difficult for us to know your exact plan and if it's part of their formulary or if it's not part of the formulary. So make sure you give us feedback. If you go to a pharmacy and they charge you, they want to charge you $500 for a new medication, you say no. And you let let us know. Let us know. Uh, And I can very often find an alternative that's just as good or very similar. And... The third point I want to make is that if there's any change in your, let's say you have a side effect, you take a new medication and you have a cough. There's always a side effect. (laughs) Side effect, you have a cough or you feel like you get leg swelling or you have, um, you get shorter breaths when you take it or you can't sleep at night when you take it. So if if you feel like the medication has an effect on you, you should not take it because it's a side effect that you don't tolerate. Make sure you let us know. Don't wait for your next appointment. Right. Give the clinic a call or send us a message on the portal, which is very convenient. And so we can make the change quickly. Okay. And you mentioned the portal, and I think I'll summarize this uh, podcast with that. If you are a DNA patient, um, there is an app, and it's called Follow My Health, and that is the portal that you're referring to. And that's where you have that constant communication. You can upload prescription bottles. Right. You can... Um, get lab results. So if you are a DNA patient, Follow My Health is a great app to make sure that you are registered for and getting that information from your nephrologist. 
This has been super informative. It took us down to the basics. It let us know why a patient would see a nephrologist and just all the things that go into that first appointment. So I really appreciate you taking the time. And Very welcome. Coming Thank and you. visiting with us today. It's been my pleasure. Thank all you. All right. Thanks for tuning in today. Learn more about Dallas Nephrology Associates at www.dnef.com. That's D-N-E-P-H dot com. And if you found the information valuable, be sure to share with those who are impacted by chronic kidney disease. Dallas Nephrology Associates DNA podcast series, Let's Talk About Kidneys, is provided for general information purposes only and does not replace the need to talk with a healthcare professional about your unique situation, care, and options. Our goal is to provide you with as much information as possible so you can be as informed as possible. Reference to any specific product, service, entity, or organization does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by DNA. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity or organization they represent. The views and opinions expressed by DNA employees, contractors, or guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of DNA or any of its representatives. Some of the resources identified in the podcast are links to other websites. These other websites may have differing privacy policies from those of DNA. Please be aware that the internet sites available through these links and the material that you may find there are not under the control of DNA. DNA shall have no responsibility for the accuracy, legality, or content of the external site or subsequent links. Contact the external site for answers to questions regarding its content. The resources included or referenced in the podcast and on the website are provided simply as a service. DNA does not recommend, approve, or endorse any of the content on the linked sites. The content provided on this website and in the podcast is not medical advice and should not be used to evaluate, diagnose, treat, or correct any medical condition. The content is solely intended to educate users regarding chronic kidney disease, end-stage renal disease, ESRD, end-stage kidney disease, ESKD, and related conditions, and ESRD, ESKD treatment options. None of the information provided on this website or referenced in the podcast is substitute for contacting a healthcare professional.